Continuam com a edição da noite. Eugene Cernan tem 75 anos e, como ele próprio me disse, a maioria das pessoas que trabalham na SIC não tinha sequer nascido quando ele andou na Lua. O comandante Cernan efetuou três voos no espaço até à sua histórica missão, Apolo 17, em que ele foi, foi o comandante e foi também o último astronauta a pisar sol lunar. Eu tive a imensa honra e o grande prazer de falar com ele aqui durante 20 minutos na SIC. Vamos ouvir essa conversa. Well, Commander <laughs> Sernan, that's a difficult act to follow, anyhow. Mario, now, that was my colleague, my scientist colleague mm -hmm. on the moon. You know, real astronauts, real mm -hmm. naval aviators mm -hmm. don't fall on a trip like that. On the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it was you. <laughs> the record shows uh, you. I know. Okay. You, you were yeah. uh, the last man on the moon. Some of the footprints that we still see today were yours. You were the 11th American astronaut on the moon. And, uh, and you were probably the first one to fall on the moon, to trip and yeah, fall. Perhaps. You perhaps, were? Yeah, yeah perhaps. Uh, w in one six gravity, actually, we're very adaptable creatures, you and I. Mm -hmm. So learning to walk and run. Mm -hmm. Was that the best way gravity? to walk on the moon? Cause it's yeah, you don't, you don't, to go from here to there, your computer up here between your ears says, I don't want to walk. I want to get there quickly. I want to jump. It's, an, it's a natural if you will, reprogramming of your senses. Mm -hmm. We're amazing. We're amazing creatures. You know, God put us together properly and we get to a one-six gravity environment and we're at home very quickly. You were also 22 hours on the moon, uh, far more than mm -hmm. uh, the other Apollos ever mm -hmm. did. Um, three, three, over three. So days. you had time to think while you were there. When you, when you spoke about God now, when you looked above and you looked at, at Earth, down there? Well, can I, can I take you back to Apollo 10, yeah. my first trip to the moon? Just, just going, going somewhere, going, running, outrunning the Earth's gravity. Because you, you flew three times in space. I flew three times. Three, three different missions. Two of those trips were to the moon. And when you go to the moon, it's a totally different space program than orbiting the Earth. Because orbiting the Earth, you don't really see it. You don't really see the Earth until you leave until you go out for a journey somewhere in space and that horizon at a slightly curved in Earth orbit closes in around itself and all of a sudden instead of flying over coastlines and rivers and across the ocean in 15 minutes, they evolve in front of your eye. It, 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 it's, it's something you have, to, you have to accept and grasp with. It's enormously overwhelming. And the Earth, you begin to look for it from across oceans and continents and, and, and pole to pole. Uh, and the Earth gets smaller very quickly as you go to the moon until it comes to the time with nothing bigger than the palm of your hand, your thumb. You can cover up what I call your identity with reality. And on that first trip on Apollo 10, I realized as I moved on away that 12 hours later something was happening. I was looking at the other. I was no longer going around the world. I was looking at the Earth, the other side. So it was, Earth, you were watching it, it, it was turning over itself? It was turning on an axis. I couldn't, I looked for the strings that must be holding up. Very mysteric, mysteriously yet majestically, mm -hmm. I was all of a sudden looking at the other side of the world. And I came to the conclusion on Apollo 10 to answer your original question, that there's something I don't understand. The Earth was, had too much purpose, too much logic, that there has to be some, somebody bigger than you and me, a, a creator who put the small part of the universe together that I was privileged to see. That's not meant to be a religious statement because I respect the manner in which you desire to worship your God or how you want to address him. But when I went back on Apollo 17, it just came back to me once again, particularly when I stood on the moon. I sat on God's front porch for three days of my life. 
looking back home. That, that's that's something you have to you have to spend time thinking about. Is it? Uh, I, I've never spoken before to to, to somebody who, who had an experience like this. Is it a, a a humbling experience, or does it make you feel powerful? Yeah, I it, it, you know people say, do you feel above it all? Do you feel superior? No. Certainly not at all. I think, yes, I think you're right. I think it is a humbling experience to have this opportunity to be where you are, somewhere in the Star Trek world out there, looking back at your real identity in life. I mean, I look back there, that's where my mother gave birth to me. That's where my family is. That's what I can feel and understand. And you, you, you want where, to find a way of sharing that. Huh? You, you, you did you feel isolated? Did you feel alone? You were always in contact. But well, uh, we're in contact with the Earth, uh, and you're there. You're, I'm you're, sure you, you had static. You, 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 you don't feel alone. You realize you're a long way from home. You realize that you're outran of gravity to the Earth. You're captured by another planet. In that respect, a lot's got to happen before you, you get home. But the whole world's watching what you do. And you want to you wanna find a way then, and I've been trying for three and a half, four decades to find a way now of really sharing what that feeling was like. I wanted to reach out three-dimensionally. You look at the earth surrounded by the blackest black you can conceive in your mind, the endlessness of it all. And it exists because I saw it with my own eyes. And you wish your arm were long enough where you can bring it back, hold it close to your heart.